Next on WAND News at 6, they may be small in number, but they've got the force with them. Even if it's from a distance, the UAW obeys the law and moves its message across the street. A pizza delivery turned deadly. Now the man accused of murder with a baseball bat takes the stand in his own defense. And if you've been thinking of finding a steady job in the armed forces, you may have to stand in line. Those jobs aren't all that easy to come by anymore. It's all straight ahead on WAND News at 6. Kindness, attention to detail, personal concern. These are the hallmarks of J.J. Moran and Sons Funeral Directors. Motivated by a deep respect for the dignity of life, we know the importance of personal attention and strive to make your concerns our concerns. We are available to assist you in any area, making the service we arrange a meaningful expression of your faith. When choosing a funeral home for your family, remember the things that truly matter. Remember, caring is the reason to choose J.J. Moran and Sons Funeral Directors. Tonight, uh, uh, uh. good angel, bad angel, who do you trust? What do I do? What do I do? Good party. Full house. Yeah, I can't go camping this weekend. It's business before pleasure. This This is a 92 Votes special report. I'm Catherine Cryer. I'm Bernard Shaw in New Hampshire. Roughly 90% of the polls are now closed in this first in the nation primary state. The headlines out of here. Incumbent President George Bush appears to be facing a rougher challenge than anyone predicted, with insurgent conservative Patrick Buchanan likely to rack up at least, at least 40% of the vote. And on the Democratic side, CNN declares former U.S. Senator Paul Songus of Massachusetts the winner. Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton will finish second, elbowing for the third place advantage. U.S. Senator Bob Carey of Nebraska, former California Governor Jerry Brown, and U.S. Senator Tom Harkin of Iowa. We see some pictures now from the headquarters of Paul Songus of Massachusetts in Nashua, New Hampshire. It's clear that this crowd is anticipating that the man next door will be coming here sometime relatively soon, Catherine, and uh, we'll be hearing from Paul Sagas, the man who says he's not Santa Claus. Well, but he's certainly with 90% uh, of the polls now closed and predictions for some time. I'm sure he's comfortable in, in uh, acknowledging the victory this evening. And certainly, and he'll be bringing a sack full of victory uh, feelings and uh, expectations and expressions tonight. The master of the exit poll, our political analyst, William Schneider, joins us now. This is a fascinating night, Bill. Totally unexpected. Uh, as usual, the New Hampshire voters have defied all the predictions of the pundits and the experts. It looks like President Bush is in for the fight of his life to maintain his lead. Uh, we're now showing him with the lead over Pat Buchanan, but Buchanan will break that 40% figure, which a lot of people said he had to break in order to continue his campaign and to prove himself a credible challenger to President Bush. Uh, on the Democratic side, the race is a little bit muddled. Uh, we've declared Paul Tongas the winner. Uh, he has won the Democratic nomination. Uh, Bill Clinton appears to be in second place. A tight race for that third slot. A lot of Democrats are vying for that third slot because they believe that both Tongas and Clinton have uh, raised doubts about their electability around the country. So a lot of Democrats say, if I can just position my candidate, or the candidate says, if I can come in third, then I will be the credible alternative to both Clinton and Tongas. But the Democratic race at this point looks very muddled. Back to the GOP. What do we know at this hour about the Buchanan vote? Well, the Buchanan vote is driven as, uh, by the economic issue. It's a protest vote. Uh, George Bush's negatives in our exit poll were very high. A lot of the voters in the Republican primary today disapproved of George Bush. They were angry about the economy. It was the voters who said the national economy is in poor shape who voted two to one for Pat Buchanan. It was the voters who say their own financial situation had worsened. Actually, the conservative voters in New Hampshire, who make up about three in five of the Republican primary voters, they split their vote between Bush and Buchanan. Buchanan didn't wipe up among conservatives, but he won big margins among those who were angry about the economy, and they appear to have, tr to have turned out in record numbers. Well, the turnout in record number, we saw Pat Buchanan on the campaign trail earlier today, and he was out trying his best as the polls opened in the Granite State to uh, get as many votes as he could. This is our last campaign stop, and, uh, and basically, well, we'll tell you what we're here for. We're here to uh, hit the afternoon papers appearing at a polling place. <laughs> and that was the candidate but, this morning, uh, and uh, correspondent Deborah Potter now is at Buchanan headquarters. Deborah. 
Bernie, it's going to be a party here in a little while. The supporters are just beginning to trickle in. But there is, of course, the mood of celebration because they know they're, if not with the winner, with a man who made a real impression on this race. There is a great deal of happiness. The candidate himself is said to be very upbeat and, in fact, enjoying himself. He went jogging just a little while ago, and now we believe he's sitting back in his hotel watching the returns come in, feeling pretty good. No one here admits to being in the least bit surprised by his uh, finish, which most people are calling surprising, of course, outside of this room, but his supporters say they kind of expected it all along, and perhaps with good reason. Buchanan did have a message that resonated here in New Hampshire. He went after George Bush. In particular, he went after him on the Read My Lips routine, and one of the things they have here tonight at this uh, party are Read My Lips balloons. So you can see they're still uh, pursuing this message. Uh, it's a, a fun place to be this evening. Also, you should know Buchanan really spent a lot of time here. He spent uh, all but the last, th all but three days in this month in New Hampshire campaigning, and he spent an awful lot of money, almost two million dollars. A lot of that on paid media advertising. What his uh, finish tonight will obviously mean is more money will be coming into the campaign, and that will allow him to go on, in particular in the South. Uh, perhaps as long as June, if this continues. Back De to the anchor desk. Deborah Buchanan has comported himself uh, as a candidate with discipline, and I'm just wondering whether you've heard anything back channel among the Buchanan staff people about how they really feel about what they're doing to George Bush tonight. Well, uh, there is a feeling, uh, I think, here of, of just relishing the finish. Uh, I'm not sure there's a lot of analysis going on about hurting an incumbent president, which, which does happen among Republicans. But a lot of the people that I've talked to here say they were never active in any campaign before, that they came out this time because Buchanan was speaking to them. He was tapping into their anger. So these are not the kind of people who were sort of loyal George Bush Republicans uh, in the past necessarily. They're people who, who really wanted to, to get that protest in, and Buchanan was their vehicle. Deborah Potter, we'll get back to you very, very shortly. Catherine? Now to the incumbent president, who was very presidential today on the last day of voting, on the day of voting here in New Hampshire, working on foreign policy, discussing a possible summit with that Boris Yeltsin. Wherever, whatever state and we have Charles Bierbauer, senior White House correspondent, standing by at the White House. Charles, a very remarkable day. The polls have closed. 90% of the vote is in, but the race is too close to call. Well, there's no joy in Mudville here. Uh, under the drizzling skies of Washington, the president, as you pointed out, stuck close to home today, said he would not have changed his campaign, would not have spent more time up in New Hampshire. But the sense is uh, very much that this is not going to be a joyous evening. Uh, even if the president ekes out a win, and the White House and campaign aides are saying a win is a win, he has certainly been sent a, a much more resounding message uh, than was ever envisioned by the uh, Bush quail campaign. Uh, one sense of that may be that early in the day, White House aides said, well, we'll put out a statement after, uh, after the victory is clear. And what we can see now is that the victory is not clear, even to the extent is that there is some last minute rethinking going on inside the White House. Rumors that perhaps the president's spokesman, perhaps his campaign chief, Bob Teeter, or perhaps even the president himself might have to make an appearance to explain what really went wrong in New Hampshire. We don't know yet that that's going to happen. They're watching and waiting as well inside. Back to you. Thanks, Charles. Bernie? Thank you. Paul Sagas, as we indicated, the man who, according to our estimate, has won the Democratic race in the New Hampshire primary here. Mr. Sagas was up early this morning getting out telling his supporters that he hoped they would do well today because, of course, they need lots of campaign money. Richard Roth, you're at Saga's headquarters. What's it like? Anticipation? Uh, that's very much the word, uh, Bernie. I'm standing right now in a place called Raspberries, which is Paul Saga's primary night headquarters. Not the kind of name you'd want for a restaurant for a uh, celebration for a winning candidate in a New Hampshire primary, but that's the one it is, uh, and there's an overflow crowd in three other buildings uh, outside of this uh, Raspberries nightclub. Uh, supporters uh, very upbeat, uh, in the air, a sense of anticipation. Also, you hear a lot of air in the air because they're blowing up balloons, uh, and they're going off every uh, minute or two. And when CNN made the call that uh, Mr. Paul Sangus would win this New Hampshire, Mer Hampshire primary, a bit of a yell went up uh, for about Five seconds in the crowd, and you probably heard it back there. 
Uh, they seem to know that Paul Songus is the winner. The candidate uh, is going to be watching the results at a hotel in Manchester with his wife, Nikki, and other family members, and he's expected over here in three hours uh, to talk to supporters. And now, Songus had uh, a lot of recognition here in New Hampshire from his days as senator in uh, Massachusetts. That helped. But what voters told our CNN producer Keith McAllister today is that they liked his no-nonsense approach. They really liked his pro-economic message. Songus has been uh, called a pro-economic liberal. He's going to have to prove, of course, that he can carry his message to other parts of the United States. He told voters and reporters uh, earlier today at uh, voting uh, booths that uh, he can carry that message. Yesterday, of course, he said north, south, east, and west. You bet he's a regional candidate. So that's the latest here at Songus headquarters in Manchester, New Hampshire. This is Richard Roth reporting live now back to the anchor desk in Manchester. Richard, before you go back to what's happening there at Raspberry's question, organization. What are the Songus people saying about money and organization? And are they saying that they can make this a national campaign? They say they can run a national campaign. Just moments ago, we talked to uh, Dennis Newman, uh, New Hampshire campaign manager for Paul Songus, and he said uh, we can win nationally. We've always thought so. He demeaned uh, Senator Bob Kerry's comments, and he pointed out that Kerry uh, in neighboring uh, Iowa, next to his home state of Nebraska, could only run fourth. The money is coming in. He said they got $50,000 in just a two-day period. One office got $5,000 in checks, many people just walking in and handing them over. Richard Roth at Songus headquarters. Catherine? Well, just as Songus was predicted to finish first in this race, Bill Clinton was predicted to come in second. He's been working very, very hard the last several days. In fact, some numbers indicate that virtually half the voters that voted for Bill Clinton actually met him during the course of this campaigning. And we have with us Gene Randall standing by at Bill Clinton's headquarters. Gene? Catherine, the Clinton campaign wants to believe two things. First, that its candidate has made a remarkable recovery here in New Hampshire, and second, that even better days lie ahead. Translation, a solid second place finish in New Hampshire isn't bad when the winner is from neighboring Massachusetts. In the words of a Clinton campaign official here, let Paul Sagas try his hand in the South. The Super Tuesday primaries, of course, on March 10th are dominated by southern and border states. And Clinton tomorrow travels to Georgia, which holds a primary on March 3rd, and Florida, a Super Tuesday state. We're told Governor Clinton will appear in this ballroom in Merrimack at about 8.15 Eastern time tonight, and will speak for about 20 minutes to his supporters, then to a series of TV interviews. The plan calls for Clinton to enter a darkened ballroom, lighted only by a spotlight. Clearly a dramatic first place situation for a second place finish. And that's the situation here in Merrimack. Back to the anchor desk. Gene, there was much to recover for Bill Clinton uh, in this particular vote. What do his aides say about his performance? How do they feel? There is a solid line coming from everyone you talk to in the Clinton camp campaign, and that is, boiled down to its essentials, Bill Clinton is the political comeback player of the year. They will point out to you that when Michael Dukakis from Massachusetts won New Hampshire four years ago, he won by 16 points. So they're declaring this to be kind of a moral victory, if not first place. Thank you, Gene Randall. Bernie? Well, the polls, 90% of the polls here in the Granite State have closed, and uh, some are still open, though. 81% of the people here in New Hampshire have voted, and when we return with our extend, extended coverage of this uh, primary, we're going to hear from Ken Bodie and also from Bill Schneider. We'll be right back. Imagine your refrigerator with bigger door shelves, for bigger bottles, with leftovers left, in quick serve trays for leftover space, more space, nearly 27 cubic feet, and a door in the door for things you use more. Imagine GE's Space Center 27. That's a pretty good imitation. A moment, a conversation. <laughs> it shouldn't feel any different when you're talking long distance. We think you should be able to call anyone, anywhere, anytime, and still save money. That's why we invented the new AT&T Any Hour Saver Plan. We don't think you should have to make lists or watch clocks. $10 for an hour of calls anytime. Then bonus prices of just 11 cents a minute after 5, and on weekends. 
Because how you talk is your business. Making it more affordable is ours. Hello, Linus. I see your blanket's out for washing. I feel so insecure. Security is why over 45 million people trust MetLife to ensure their lives and health and help plan their retirement. Does MetLife give up blankets? No, but the world-famous MetLife representative is the very symbol of security in an uncertain world. You're right. I feel better already. Get Met. It pays. When you want to watch the news, you turn to CNN. But did you know we're much more? Like coverage of world financial markets. Fashion from Paris to New York. All the sports. Scores and highlights. Both sides of the issues. The world's weather. Talk that will thrill you. Tantalizing cuisine. The pros and the cons. Advice you can count on. Showbiz. From Hollywood to Broadway. CNN. We're the news you need and much more. Welcome back to Manchester, New Hampshire, where we will be for at least another four, perhaps five hours. Inside Politics, incidentally, is going to be live at 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time. According to the exit polling that we have and based on early returns, this is how the Democrats will finish tonight. Paul Songus winning the Democratic primary. Second, Bill Clinton, the governor of Arkansas. In the second tier, it is too close to call. You have Bob Carey, Tom Harkin, and, and Brown. They are so close, so bunch, that we cannot call it. Too close to call. In the Mario Cuomo write-in effort, so far he is still in single digits. Catherine? Well, and all of the candidates except George Bush are in New Hampshire to watch the returns with their campaign staffs. And, of course, the man who holds the White House is there watching the returns. Okay, now let's bring in once again Ken Bodie, who's sitting here and watching these numbers and this finish. Which side do you want to talk about first? We've got a good story on both sides tonight. New Hampshire clearly didn't settle anything on the Democratic side. Paul Songus will be called upon to win someplace else if he's a genuine frontrunner. Bill Clinton will say, I'm going to the South, where I have a, a, uh, a battle, a uh, uh, good bunch of soldiers in the South waiting to, to mop up for me. We didn't really settle anything so far as we can tell in terms of who's third place. So the two Midwestern senators, Kerry and Harkin, will go out to South Dakota and fight it out out there. Jerry Brown seems to be heading for a surprisingly close uh, uh, nudge up against those folks out there. The one thing we may have settled is whether or not the voters of this state want Mario Cuomo. Uh, and they don't seem, there doesn't seem to be any outpouring or, or great amount of support for Mario Cuomo in this thing. But the real story may be on the other side this time. Well, that's interesting because while, while there certainly is a, a great race going on among the Democrats, the leadership back in Washington still seems to be talking about other candidates. And with this horse race for third place, it hasn't really told us anything about whether uh, a viable nationally elected candidate is going to come out of this, has it? Absolutely. The, uh, on the Democratic side, you know, there's good news for Republicans, which is that the Democratic race doesn't seem to have projected a front runner who has a commanding lead coming out of New Hampshire who is seen as an electable national candidate. The good news for the Republicans is the Democratic primary. The good news for the Democrats is the Republican primary. <laughs> I mean, the Republican primary shows a wounded president who looks like he'll have trouble getting reelected until they look at the Democratic side and they say, well, who are they going to put up to run against him? Both of the front runners in New Hampshire, Songus, who won, and Clinton, who came in second, appear to have serious electability problems. It does look, doesn't it, though, like this is going to be a long race, perhaps on both sides. It doesn't, there doesn't seem to be any reason for Pat Buchanan to consider that this is a short crusade now, that he's got plenty of uh, ammunition, plenty of momentum to carry this forward. And if you look at the history of presidents who have been challenged seriously in this state, going back all the way to 1952 and Harry Truman, Lyndon Johnson in 68, Gerald Ford in 76, and Jimmy Carter in 1980. They are wounded badly enough in the state that not one of them was reelected in November. That's right. And uh, I think you're going to find also that uh, when Paul Songus comes out of this state, you know, there's two ways to come out of New Hampshire. Gary Hart came out with a tremendous burst of momentum. Two weeks later, he won the Florida primary without even making an effort. I don't think Songus has that kind of momentum because, after all, Bill Clinton mostly inflicted his wounds on himself, and he was never vice president of the United States. Uh, Michael Dukakis came out of New Hampshire winning as expected, which is what Songus did. Dukakis had money, organization. He marketed himself very skillfully in the South. Songus doesn't seem to have that much money or that good an organization. 
We'll be coming back to this, and certainly we'll want to talk about the independents. When we return with our extended coverage from New Hampshire, we're going to hear from a former Democratic vice presidential candidate and a former member of President Bush's cabinet. Oh, no. My hair's not only going gray, now it's getting thinner. I wish they made something for gray thinning hair. They have Grecian Plus. Grecian Plus is a fresh smelling foam that gradually brings back natural looking color, the famous Grecian way. But this Grecian has a big plus. It builds body for healthier, fuller looking hair. Your hair looks great, feels thicker too. Grecian Plus, the total treatment for gray thinning hair. <laughs> He has already had, or he already has organization in Maryland, and we'll see how he does there. 
But I think it's still very, very early as far as the Democrats are concerned. It's, it's, this is one, one season where you see two states, Iowa and New Hampshire, which were traditionally the places where our candidates would come forward and we'd really see who would be a front runner. Uh, we're in this instance, because Tom Harkin is from Iowa and because uh, uh, Paul Songus is from Massachusetts next door to New Hampshire, that you're really not going to get the, the boost to these campaigns that you might ordinarily have. But the real story, I think, in New Hampshire is what is happening on the Republican side. And I think it's a real indication of how New Hampshire voters feel about what the economy, how the economy is affecting them and, and what kind of leadership they've been getting from the White House over the past four years. Well, as Bill Schneider said, uh, there is good news for us, and you just heard it, which is people want to diminish, on the Democrat side, want to diminish Songus' achievement. Uh, the folks in Washington, uh, Foley and Mitchell, are talking about getting someone else in the race. If I were Songus right now, uh, he's been running against George Bush, I would now turn and run against the Democratic Congress as well, saying these guys want to be the power brokers when the people have, uh, have spoken. Obviously, Songus is an embarrassment to part of the Democratic Party, since he's in favor of capital gains uh, uh, cuts. Uh, and uh, doesn't want to bash business, but uh, he did get the votes. Well, certainly when uh, the others in, in uh, the running with him are labeling him a Republican, uh, attending that as a slam, but if in fact he does that, uh, and Congresswoman, I ask you as well, how does he turn to the party then for support and for financing to move south with the campaign? Listen, I, I think uh, Bill may have misheard what I said. I was not diminishing uh, Senator Songus's Sang win in uh, New Hampshire at all. And I have to tell you that I think each of the Democratic candidates are not only very articulate on the issues that are facing the people of this country, but in addition to that, will be able to take on George Bush on the economy, which is hurting the voters of this country. Um, I think if you take a close look at what Paul Songus is saying on health care, on the economy, comes at it different ways from traditional Democrats. But you know, there, there are lots of traditional Democrats who are coming on board and saying this is the kind of a discussion that I want to hear, and that's very, very good for our party, and I think that's good for our country. The distinction will always be between what a Democrat says about the future of this country, about the middle class, and what a Republican says out of the White House. Congresswoman, you have duked it out with George Bush, and you say you're very fascinated and find more interesting what's happening in the Republican side tonight here in Manchester. You don't think that Pat Buchanan can knock off Bush, do you? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think uh, when push comes to shove and you get through some of these other states that Buchanan is going to run out of money, among other things. But, uh, but the president, I think, has been severely wounded. And I think if he gets one message from this uh, whole fiasco for him up in New Hampshire, it's that he better start paying attention to what's going on in the economy. You know, start talking about jobs at home. Start talking about health care. Start talking about educating our children. I mean, that's what the voters of New Hampshire are saying. Before, it was indicated that the, the people who came out during the course of the, the, the exit poll had indicated that they were voting for against George Bush and for Pat Buchanan, not based upon ideology. It was the conservatives were split down the center. What they were basing it on was how they felt and how they were being affected by the policies of this administration for the last four years. So I okay. think that George w Bush is wounded, but I, I don't expect Buchanan to beat him. All right, Geraldine Ferraro, William Bennett, thank you both for joining us. And when we come back, we'll be joined by nationally syndicated columnist Jack German. I use a shampoo for dandruff, but my scalp still itches like crazy. You need new Scalpacin, the revolutionary scalp medicine for deep scalp itch, not ordinary dandruff. Scalpacin is not a shampoo. It's a clear liquid you don't wash away like shampoo. Apply Scalpacin anytime for deep scalp itch relief with medicine chosen by doctors over all these dandruff shampoo formulas. Scalpacin penetrates to relieve the itch and help prevent flaking. The itch is gone. New Scalpacin, the scalp medicine for deep scalp itch. 